Picture this, you just got yourself a brand new NAS, you got it all plugged in, all set up, you got Plex installed on it, you start to copy your movies over, and it is slow. And you ask yourself, why is it slow? It's all local here. Well, more than likely, your home router only has gigabit connection. Don't worry, I have a solution for that. Let's go. Hey, what is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Havoc. In this one, we're gonna unbox this beast right here. This TP-Link BE9300. As I said in the intro, I'm gonna show you how you can go from gigabit connections at home up to 2.5 gigabit connections so your NAS runs like butter. So I have a couple NASs at home. They're Synologies. They each have 2.5 gig connections and my home router I currently have only has gigabit so I could bond them together etc but i'm not going to get those single transfer speeds that i really want so what we're going to do here is we're going to take a look at this be 9300 from tp link before we get into it i want to let you know tp link did send me this router to unbox for you all so just want to get it out there thank you so much tp link let's get rolling so as you can see it's the be 9300 tri-band wi-fi 7 router wi-fi 7 i'm super excited to give this a go as well archer be 550 so it goes by a couple different skews we got blazing fast speeds we got ultra smooth wi Wi-Fi far reaching so I'm happy to have something that reaches further in my house as well as outside because I have a couple smokers that can connect to the Wi-Fi and it's going to be great to have really good solid connections for those as well. Let's take a look at the front of the box here. So we have obviously the TP-Link branding, Wi-Fi 7 up here and a couple of the numbers that goes by the BE9300 tri-band Wi-Fi 7 router. It's also the Archer BE550. We got blazing fast speeds 3.6 times faster than your Try band. We got blazing Wi Fi speeds, ultra smooth Wi Fi, far reaching coverage. That Wi Fi 7 is supposed to give us a lot further coverage, so I'm super happy about that. To see if it's actually going to connect to my grills outside so I can use the apps and program and cook my Thanksgiving turkeys, etc. And then full multi gig connectivity. We have five 2.5 gigabit connections on the back. Super excited about those. You can see the uh, layout there of the actual device. And then on this side here, we got the, just kind of a profile view, some of the specs that we just talked about. Use, oh, the Tether app. So the Tether app is a fun one too, to help you set up the device. Tether app's actually really cool to do it all on your phone. And then on the back, other stuff here, easy mesh capable, VPN client support, great connectivity, enhanced security, more of the other things we already talked about. And then on this side, you actually get to see the IO ports. So we have six internal antennas. I think that's because of the Wi-Fi 7 as well. We got four, two, 2.5 gig LAN ports. Those can be five gigabit aggregation speed ports. I'll just be using the 2.5 because that's what my NASs have. A quad core CPU, and then we have a 2.5 gig WAM port, which if you have gig plus internet from your provider, this is a great way that allows you to use all those speeds. And then we have a USB uh, 3.0 port. So let's go ahead and unbox it. I'll flip it over here and let's see how excited to dig into this. Again, shout out to our friends over at TP-Link for sending this along. I reached out and kind of said what I had going on uh, because I am a TP-Link partner. They were like, hey, yeah, we'd love to kind of help you out. This is what we have. I know they have a different version that also has a screen on the front. I didn't really want that one because I don't need more LED lights and stuff in my room because, you know, streamer and you sometimes need to have uh, the ability to turn some lights and just off and just kind of be, you know, relaxing. So. Uh, plain white box. Let's see if we can get it open here without ripping it apart. There we go. We'll turn it sideways here so we don't fully block everything. Oh, this thing's a tank. Wow. So pull it out. We'll set it over here on the side. I don't know if that's upside down or not, but we'll see. And then uh, inside the box here, we have information on how to kind of set everything up. And it has a QR code you can scan. It talks about your SSIDs and your default password. And then you can also write down that stuff if you think you're going to forget it. And you can put the sticker on the router itself. I highly suggest you don't do that unless you're really bad about remembering stuff. Use a password like program that can remember your passwords. And I use personally, I use a program or a service called one password it works really well love it we have the family plan I use it for all our family members so this box i just took out here that is maybe the power brick yep that's the power brick so we will uh, leave that in there for right now we don't need that just yet put it back up here in this box we have installation manuals we'll leave that alone we don't need that for yet and then on the back here we just have a probably cat six network cable i don't see a uh, label on it but network cable so you don't got to worry about that that's it for the box right there and uh, let's close it back up 
Minimal packaging, it's all cardboard. And if you have watched me unbox other things, you know how much I love you know minimalistic packaging when it comes to uh, products. But this thing is a tank. We're just gonna tear it open. Tear it on open. This is definitely not your uh, traditional looking router. It kind of looks like a gaming console if I'm, not, if I'm being completely honest here. So here's the top of it, or I should say here's the front of it. And we have a, it looks like lights on and off. We have Wi-Fi button and then that might be, I don't know what that button is. Guess we'll have to look at the directions or when we get into the actual software, we can take a look at what that is. Cause I, I don't know what those buttons, that button does. Open here at the top. So cooling, uh, cooling in the front. Looks like we got a single line of holes in the front for cooling the back the bottom same thing the bottom has the rubber grommets to help with the noise and also keep it in place and then you got more uh, fan ports in the back what it doesn't have is any sort of rubber grommets or anything if you want to lay it flat on its side instead of vertical so or instead of vertical like that so on the back here we have all the good stuff that we really want to kind of look at up top you have all the information about the actual wireless router that is specific to you there's a qr code you can scan there as well to kind of set it up in the, the tether app you got the four ports here that are the 2.5 gig ports and then you have your 2.5 gig wan port now this is obviously only a four port router most routers now have like five to maybe six ports i'd say so we are losing one port if you really need more ports get a switch that's what I'll be doing for some of my stuff. You can still use your gigabit switches as well. So let's say I'm plugging in the switch or the ROG Ally or a console. I'll plug that into gigabit so that can go through a switch no problem. Only thing I really want the 2.5 gig for is for those Synology NASes because I have two of them. And then we also have down here USB 3.0 reset switch. Power goes in and then an on and off button. So pretty straightforward. It is large. Like I said, it is pretty, it is pretty tall. So you can kind of get a judge here of how tall that is. Uh, this is how tall it will be when you stand it up on your desk. Most of them sit on their sides, so you have much lower profile. You can see if we were to sit it on our side, this is how tall it would be. It's still kind of thicker than normal. However, we don't have the external antennas, so we save space on that. And like I said before, we only have the rubber points on the bottom of it. There's nothing on the side. So if we wanted to lay it on its side for that desk space or whatever, we would need to put our own little rubber grommets on it. And you get those like the command strip ones you can get super cheap so i'm not really worried about that probably end up using it it's good to know that it can be used on the side i just got to get some stuff to go for it all right nothing else to do except for go plugging it in and let's take a look at the setup here we are back at the computer and we have the router plugged in and we have the pc plugged into one of the lan ports on the back of the router what we want to do here is we're going to go to the web page setup you can also set up the router via the tether app and you get that by scanning that qr code we showed earlier on the actual little piece of paper. That piece of paper also has some information about your Wi-Fi networks, etc. the default setup. Well, like I said, for this one, we're gonna go through the PC to set it up. So what you can do is fire open a web browser like Chrome and type in tplink wifi.net, enter, and it should take you to this page. If it doesn't, most of the TP-Link routers, they have a default IP address of 192.168.0.1. You can type that in, hit enter, and you should get to this section. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna type in tp-link wifi.net and see if it goes to this page. So we'll do that, hit enter, and there you see it pops up the page right away. We need to create a new administrative password and you can see the rules once you click in the first field there. So go ahead and make your password, make sure it's secure. We'll go ahead and do that. After you enter your new password, you'll get to this screen where it starts the actual setup of the wireless router. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna choose our time zone. I am in Pacific, so we'll scroll to that. We'll do next. And then you see here it says, hey, you don't have anything connected to the WAM port. You might wanna do that. We're not gonna do that for this example. Not really Ready to set that up yet, but we'll show you those settings later in the uh, actual setup if you don't want to do the wizard here. We'll skip. This part is where you can set up all the wireless settings. I'm going to leave them default for right now because we're going to go into the admin and kind of look at the advanced setup for that stuff. We'll do next. And then here it says, do you want to keep your router updated automatically? I suggest you do that if you're not really familiar with um, downloading and installing firmware on things. If you are and you're a techie, just choose not now and you'll do a lot of stuff on your own. We'll do next and then it should dump us right into 
this next screen where we have our setup is complete and it gives us all our information of what we just did. Then what you can do here is you can take all your wireless settings if you don't remember or can't remember what they are, put them into your password management program. Most of those have secure note applications built into them where you can type and save kind of important information like that that you can't remember. I use one password for my password management. If you're interested, there's a link in the description below of where you can check that out. So we'll go next. But then here it says you want to join the user experience uh, improvement program. Um, you can do that if you want to. And then you can scan and download the Tether app. We'll finish. And then this is kind of just a basic setup. Hey, we don't have any internet, which is correct because we haven't plugged it in. And this is your network map. Through here, you can see the actual router and the mesh devices and then the clients. We click on the router and get some information about that. Just what its IP address is, what it's called, what um, probably has what firmware is on it, CPU load, what ports are plugged in on the LAN and the WAN, memory usage, uh, enable, disable, Internet of Things, wireless, guest networks. And then you can come over here to your mesh devices. It'll show you any mesh devices you have on the network set up. You can add devices and then it'll show your clients here. My machine I'm on now is called Streamer. <laughs> so, um, and you can, you can block those or, or, you know, or kick them off or change like their speed limit, etc. Go over internet. This is where you can easily set up your internet connection. Wireless, we talked about that earlier. We can go into some more details here of filling out your different wireless settings. You can see here 2.4 and 5 gigahertz is now combined into one. And that's what this smart connect is. You can just have a single Wi-Fi network and it could be a device can connect to it via 2.4 or 5 gigahertz, depending on what it is. You don't have to have separate Havoc dash 5 gig or Havoc dash 2.4 gig network, which I had to do with my barbecues because they can only connect to 2.4. So this is going to be really awesome for that, where I can just connect to one address or I can just connect to one SSID and not worry about it. Then here's the 6 gigahertz network. And we got Milo, guest network, if you want to set up guest network stuff, and the same thing with Internet of Things. What's kind of really cool about the uh, TP-Link stuff is if we do, let's do a five gig network for um, guest, and then we'll do a, we'll do no security for right now. But what we can do is if we hide the SSID, then we won't, nobody will be able to see there's a guest network, so your neighbors won't know. But if we do share network right here, we can actually print that out. And um, I think there are different products on Amazon you can find where where you can um, print out a QR code and, and like hook it to the magnet or like secure it to a magnet and put it on the fridge. And that way when people come over to your house, family, friends or whatever, and they want Wi-Fi because maybe they don't want to hang out with you. They want to just hang out and do conversations on their phone, AKA the kids so the adults can talk. They can just scan that and um, they'll get on your guest network. They don't have to know what the SSID is. If there's a password associated with it, you don't have to give out the password. So that's a really kind of cool way to allow people to connect to your network very securely without having your password get out in case you don't want to share that with um, maybe your own kids if you have them and you're trying to keep them off that network. And then uh, Home Shield is just some of the security stuff where it can scan your network and see if everything's good. You got parental controls, you know, you can set up to where kids can get on different times. It says it can manage your kids' online activities by blocking content, uh, time limits, schedules. So quality service, you can enable um, prioritization of different devices. So for example, if I'm in a game playing something and my wife's doing some homework, obviously her homework is much more important than my game so we can provide uh, QoS for maybe some sort of webinar or video she has to watch for school um, for her device. So that's kind of some good stuff you can do there. And then there's just more features if you want to do the Tether app and get the expanded services via the Tether app pro features or whatever. The good stuff over here is in the advanced. So advanced will give you overview of your network and then go to internet. This is where you can actually set up your internet connection. So dynamic IP or static IP. Most everybody will be dynamic and that's just because that's what your internet service provider is providing you, but you can do that stuff there. If it's plugged in, it's dynamic. This would all be automatically filled by your um, provider's modem. Or if you're static, that's where you type in all that stuff. We'll put it back to dynamic. We have advanced settings here, there as well. If we want to set additional stuff up, we have Mac cloning right here. And uh, what that is, is you can like make your device pretend it's a uh, different device on the network. So for example, if your ISP provides you a built-in wireless router to the modem, you can sometimes put that address here and kind of trick that modem to use your router versus its internal router. There's other things you can do with that as well. Enable that network, that's going to be pretty default for everybody. And then negotiation, flow control, etc. You can read up on that. The LAN stuff, so 
Like I said earlier in the video, your default is 192.168.0.1. And what you're gonna wanna do is probably change that because all TP-Link routers, that's their default. And we wanna make sure that nobody can get into your network, potentially just get an extra layer of security. And then other devices, you know, other uh, brands of wireless routers are usually 192.168.1.1. So just kind of keep keep an eye on there. You can change that um, if you want to. Link aggregation so we can bond two ports together for faster speed. I'm not going to do that because we only have four ports and I want those ports. And then we got flow control there. You can do VLANs. Uh, this is where you set up your DHCP server. So if you only want specific amount of addresses to be released to devices that plug into your network, you can do that. If you want to do address reservations, so I'll be doing that with my NASes and my printer and etc i'll be signing those specific addresses so nothing else can take those addresses from the client list and then you can see what is actually connected on your network currently dynamic dns that's if you want to connect to your router from outside of your network so you know out and about starbucks via your phone etc you can do dynamic dns there and it helps kind of protect I'd say, depending on the service you can use, like Cloudflare, access to your device. And if your ISP changes your IP address, which they will, the dynamic DNS service will allow you to always get to one address and then it'll convert it into, you know, it'll route it to here your modem. But then routing tables, advanced stuff, TP-Link ID. So it says, oops, because we're not connected to log in. But I do have other TP-Link networks. I have one in my travel trailer. Um, I have a mesh network. I have uh, wireless smart plugs, etc. So what I can do is I can log into all those devices with one account and I can see and every manage everything from one area. So I will be doing that. Here's all of our wireless setup settings we talked about earlier. This gets uh, deeper into it. Your guest network enable and disable there internet of things so if you have stuff like your smart switches your alexas etc you can put all that stuff there wireless schedule if you want the wireless to only be available during a specific time you can do that so maybe your kids go to bed at nine o'clock you want to make sure they're not on the wi-fi after 8 30 you can shut the wi-fi off at 8 30 just by enabling and setting up the rules here for that you can do wps security and then there's additional settings here if you want to go through that usb so we can plug a usb storage device in the the back of the actual router. We talked about that USB 3 port. So if you have a um, USB drive, you can plug it back there and I can see it. And then you can use it kind of as its own kind of network storage NAS type of thing with file sharing, media sharing. You do time machines. So if you have a Mac, you can enable this and your Macs can back up. Um, to that device as well. Port forwarding is if you're going to run a server or you know mail server or something um, behind your device. That's where you would set up some port forwarding for there. Most people won't use it. This is more firewall, DMZ type stuff. Home Shield. Again, we talked about that earlier in the last part. Security. We get the firewall settings. So if you enable respond to pings from the WAN, what that'll do is if somebody knows your IP address, they can ping it, and if it gets it, they get a response. They know. Okay, that's a device let me see if i can get into it or get past it if you turn off that ping they'll ping it and they'll get no response and they'll probably go ah there's nothing there i'll move on so not everybody will do that but it's good practice to um, have that turned off so people externally don't know that your address is a valid address just a little extra level of security access control if you want to only allow specific devices to connect to this for admin and then um, you can do bindings there um, alg pass through device isolation so if we want to have our internet of things devices like our alexas and smart lights on its own network versus the network we have our computers on we can we can isolate that via here vpn client and server so you can set up your own vpn server and connect to your network remotely from a computer or, or whatever via vpn client so a secure client to get in so for example the nas as i put on this network if for some reason i wanted to be able to get to those via my phone i could maybe set up some sort of vpn server here get the client on my phone and then i can connect to the v connect the vpn on my phone it would pretend it would just dump me into my home network and I can access those NASs, etc. IP6. So if you want to do IPv6, you set all that up here. Most people won't. We're getting there though. Like more ISPs are starting to roll out um, IPv6 modems. Smart Life Assistant. So this has different skills you can do um, with Alexa and also Google Assistant. So um, I haven't looked into those, but I'm excited to see what we can do with that stuff. Easy Mesh. So if you have any Easy Mesh devices, that's where um, this would show up. I'm excited to get my um, mesh stuff set up 
up and see how it kind of works within the router here. And then the system, the final part, we have the firmware update. So if you're, uh, you do the audio update, like we talked about earlier, that's going to auto update the firmware. When there's new stuff come out, this tells you the actual version and uh, firmware you have and the version of the hardware. Local firmware, so if you're doing it yourself, you would download that firmware file from TP-Link's um, support site. You put, you'd browse it here, update. Only do that if you really kind of know what you're doing, I'd say, because there are good ways to, to brick and break your uh, your router. And then if there's any satellite systems for the easy mesh to update, you might be able to do those here. So that'll be kind of cool to see. I could do everything from one device backup and restore. So once you have a solid setup on your router, you would back it up, it backs up to a file, um, store it somewhere securely, maybe on a Google Drive, etc. And then um, if something ever happened, you can go and reload that via the restore option. Or I'll put your router back to where it was, the good setup that you just kept. And then what you do here, um, you can restore it. So go back to factory settings, but keep your login info and your cloud info or the factory restore while factory reset it out of the box, told the wipe. Admin, password, password recovery, um, management, remote management, uh, your logs, diagnostics, the ping. Um, you can do trace routes and pings. If you know what those are, you don't need an explanation. If you don't know what they are, um, basically this allows you to test different network protocols and get responses via the router. So time and language, we talked about that earlier. You can do a 24 hour time, get it from the internet. I, we're not connected to the internet, so that's why it's not working, but you can set your language, daylight savings time. This is where you can reboot the router. I usually just go to the back of the router, hit the button, turn it off for 10 seconds. Hit the button again turn it back on but you can do the reboot here or set up a reboot schedule so if i click that this says it's gonna reboot every monday at 3 a.m so if you want to have like a, a consistent reboot schedule you can set that up right there led control pretty straightforward leds on or off night mode you can enable where the leds will only be on during certain times you set that schedule here and outside of those times they turn off that's really nice if your wi-fi router is in the room you sleep in uh, you can turn the lights off there if you own a um, uh, go XLR if you're a streamer you know the pain that you used to have with the bright lights on that thing if you have it in the same room that you sleep operation mode you can do wireless router mode which is what's in now or you can go access point so if you want to use this device just as a wireless access point for maybe just to get those Wi-Fi 7 features, you can click that and do that. If you have like a different router that's solid and you love what it is and love how it works, you could use this just as a Wi-Fi 7 access point if you wanted to. And then the about, you go here and you, you can join that user experience again if you really wanted to. And there you have it, the TP-Link BE9300 Tri-Band Wi-Fi 7 router. Thanks again to our friends at TP-Link for sending this over for us to unbox on the channel. I'm really excited to get this set up on the network. I'm really curious of what kind of speeds I'm gonna get when it comes to copying my movie files and other stuff to the NASA's to get these Plex server stuff set up. If you want to pick up one of these routers, I'll put a link in the description below. And until next time, stay safe and keep doing good.